Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm always glad to have you, whether you're brand new, just wandered through, or you're a subscriber. Be sure to subscribe. I think you'll have a lot of fun in this channel. Today I'm showing you a project that I had a great time making. I started this art journal page with the metallic paints, which you know I love, and I demoed and some other stuff. The point was I really wanted to try the color shift paints because I'd heard about them, seen them in other videos, and I just hadn't gotten around to it. They were sitting around, borrowed from my friend. So I just picked a color palette, set out a bunch of things, and went for it. I made this video in double time, and there was about 50 minutes of video that I edited down. I had some troubles along the way and I didn't edit those out. I just sped them up significantly. So you'll see why it took me so long to make this art journal page. I could probably recreate it much quicker. I tried to do a good job showing you the products up to the screen along the way. A few of them I didn't, but I think I went back and looked it up. At this point, I have some of the Prima Metallic and some Distress Oxide on that page and I'm drying it. And then I have this Dilutions grape, and I don't think I'd use this. I got it at the swap, and when I opened it up, it needed a little bit of water. And sorry when I come up close to the camera and go away, sometimes it gets out of focus, but I try and fix it. So I just sprayed it with a little bit of water, then I just went for it. I thought it would be a fun contrast with the teal on the page and I watered it down a little because I've only used the Dilutions paints full strength and I wanted to try them with a little bit of water. Then I cleaned off the brush and went back full strength and I started it out slow and then I sped it up quite a bit for this segment so you don't have to watch me make the marks. I thought it was interesting because watered down it had a very different color than full strength so that's a way that if you don't have a lot of products, you can just vary the amount of water and get some variety on your page. And also the different thicknesses allow you to do different techniques. Then I spend a lot of time drying because I have a lot of different things going on and different products. My sister gave me two bottles. I think it would be called India ink, two bottles of Higgins waterproof black ink. And I really wanted to play with them, just get some drips and move it around on the page. And I think it's more fun when your drips go the opposite way of your page, not necessarily always top down, but sometimes bottom up. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I added some water and one of them moved really well. And I kind of liked the splatter. When you're playing with mixed media and different techniques, especially in, you know, this art journal that I think I spent, what, $5 on, don't be afraid to try things. Learning about how things behave. I'm trying to get speckles here. It's not working. And you're about to see why this video got so terribly long when I was filming. But playing with the different products, it's about figuring out how, and there it is. <laughs> so. We're going to call this the Great Flood of 2018. And as a reflex, I grabbed that tissue and put it in the ink and then realized, wait a minute, I always tell you not to waste things and we shouldn't waste. So I backed up the camera and started grabbing some of my different papers. And I'm making those circles with the bottom of the paint bottle. The ink got all over the bottom, so I just started grabbing the bottle and used it like a stamp. And then I filled in some blank areas on this paint pouring paper with some black. I just went over to my pile of mixed media papers and found things that could benefit from black. Okay, everything could. Or had some blank areas or just were the most handy. And here I'm just grabbing all of the bottles and stamping off and then actually using a baby wipe to get it off in case it gets wet later. And then I decide to wad up the paper and put it down in the ink. Again, I'm just trying to not let it go to waste, right? <laughs> it, it wasn't how I planned the day, but that's where it took me. And I think this was before work, so 
it was a huge mess and then I had to get it off my hands. I'm sure that you guys watch me spill things and it's probably going to get to the point where you think I do it on purpose for entertainment. True story. That's just how I am. But when you watch this, right, I had made all these papers and it was fun. And then in the end, I had dried stuff and I just took a baby wipe and cleaned it up. Okay, that moment, I definitely got my money's worth out of my glass media mat, right? Because I have a brand new countertop that, when did I get my cabinets? I don't know, sometime this year, but a countertop underneath. If I was working on that countertop or one of those, you know, small craft mats, I would have a giant black stain in the middle. So anyway, that was my ink spill for today. I'm sure I'll spill something again soon. We'll see how that cleanup goes. But I got lucky because it was at the edge of the mat. So then I picked up the project and I'm actually back to the project. And I'm trying to get those drips to go all the way up to the very tip top of the page. Using the embossing gun, I'm actually blowing the ink dot along. It probably did some drying along the way while I was cleaning up the ink, but that's fine. You just you just have to roll with it. This is supposed to be fun, right? We're not stressing out, we're crafting and relaxing. At this point, I realize, I flip it over and look, I'm probably melting the stencil paste on the back. It's possible that I didn't do a great job last time with those stars, but I realized I needed to back up a little because that new heat gun is a lot hotter. And then I had this stamp, I think this might have been from like the craft swap or something that a friend of a friend landed in my house. I didn't pay for it and I've never used it. But I like stars. I didn't want one square block on my page. So that's why I'm going around the edges to make it look like it's a more loose border and coming in at an angle. Because I didn't want a square of stars in the middle of my page. And there, because I came up from the bottom, it worked out fine. And a little more dry time. And then we break out the color shift. And the first one that I'm using is Aqua Flash and a stencil. And I haven't, like I said, this is the first time I've even opened the bottles. I don't even think I touched the paint before. It was much more sheer than I expected. I thought that when I laid it down on top of that Prima paint that was watered down in the background, it would be super bright and bold over it. So I misjudged that a little. But I will tell you, in the end, I fell in love with these color shift paints. I thought maybe they were overhyped because uh, it, they were so sheer and I was a little disappointed in the beginning. And then in the end, I love how this page turned out. Then I'm pulling out the purple, which is not called purple. I believe it is called, I don't know where it is. I lost it. It's probably called blue flash or something like that. But these paints, the color shift, they're a little more opaque than the sparks, the Prima sparks paints and less opaque than the metalliques. So they almost complement that line perfectly and are a middle one because when I used it with the stencil, you can actually see the shape of the stencil on a page much more than you would if you just used the sparks from the Prima line. And if you're not familiar with those, I have a video on those. They're a lot of fun and um, you might be able to pick them up on clearance somewhere, but they're pretty great, especially if you can find the one that is your favorite color. I, of course, like the blues. Here I'm just playing with the star stencil and putting some on in each of the different color shift. And then I had color shift on the glass mat, so I just put it on the page, stenciled around. Sorry, I got off the page. The reason I'm opening the book and looking at the other pages is I'm trying to figure out which way is up in the book and make sure that I don't get my page upside down. So I'm trying to make the color more dense around this bottom edge and fill it in. But then I realized I wanted to make sure it was actually the bottom. Also keep in mind, it's probably in this video when I made it, it was probably like six o'clock in the morning, maybe 5.30. So some sometimes things get away from me. Okay, that paint, I was pleasantly surprised 
it, it was in the paint pouring mix from a couple of different friends. I have space, so sometimes things end up at my house, especially if they weren't somebody's favorite product or if they've shifted to a different thing and they're not into paint. That one is a Deco Art Extreme Sheen, and I think it's pretty great too. I might need to do a, a separate page or a tester type thing where I see them separately, but look at this. It's very opaque. It has amazing shine and it's a little more blue than the Prima paint that I, the metallic that I put down. It's just a little darker. So it's a great paint to use with all of them. Look at that. Okay. That is awesome. Now I realized I didn't leave any white space. I got a little too crazy and I have a tendency to do that. Some people use the center of the page or the edge. I used the whole darn thing and then I thought, okay, I want to bring this back a little. I want to give your eye a place to rest and calm down and make it so that there is more contrast, not just all blue. Okay, I got shocking. I got the blue teal paint in the gesso so then I had to stick my finger in it and get it out. That's very, very common with me. And then at this point, uh, so I started it out all tidy and then I decided I wanted to smear it around a little and not necessarily follow those purple stripes. I had no plan when I started this page except test the color shift and probably the black ink. Then I, uh, I'm going to show it to you. So at this point it's still wet. And then I'm just going to set it down and let it dry. Okay, now we've come back. I don't know. We went to work or it was overnight or you never know around here. Look at that page. I love those paints. I want to do more projects with them and play with them. And I really liked the black ink. Here I have a sticker. What I do is just set stuff aside that speaks to me. I don't necessarily want to buy packs of sentiments. I don't even have a printer so I can't print things. But it says, joy is not in things, it is in us. And I just love it. It's very small. So if you have a sentiment that you like, think about how you can make it bigger or change the scale, make it stand out on your page. I punched a circle of black paper and then I was going to put dots around it and my Signo gel pen was fighting me every step of the way. So I just decided, well, this is an art journal page. We're messy and I decided that I'd just take my pen and make a line. And maybe on your cards you're meticulous and maybe every once in a while on our cards we need to let go a little more or on our scrapbook pages. I've been doing that with using paint skins and different things. But I just put a white messy line and I really like how it turned out. Then I wanted some sort of texture on the page and something to lift it up. I thought about thread, embroidery floss, ribbon. I've used all of those. I haven't used bold silky cord, which is what this product is called on a page. I'm guessing this is from the kids section. It says it's great for stringing large whole beads. And again, this was a... Uh, free product that landed at my house borrowed I think my friend got it from another friend when people know you craft stuff shows up this is a food ball pen they are known to be and I'm sorry the camera is not adjusting back and forth so just kind of roll with it like it's a dream or something Th these food ball pens are made to write on top of just about anything acrylic paint and they don't quit. Lots of times if you use Sharpies or other stuff, you only get one project out of them. The food balls just keep going, near as I can tell. But it's kind of a fat, messier ink. So uh, I wrote the date on the journal page with it and it looked like it was the sixth, but it was really the fifth. Here I decided to go crazy. I mean, for me, this is crazy. And I'm just drawing some circles on the page because I thought that would help accent the circle that I put the sentiment on and bring in a little more black. Then I am gonna put foam mount on the back of the sentiment. I should have punched a circle out of cardboard, tag board like I usually do to make it stiff. It's probably not gonna hold up well, but I was having fun and I just kept going. 
This is that Beacon 3-in-1 glue, and I'm using that to attach the bold silky cord. This stuff is silky, and it's thick, and I think it needed something extra. Then I had to move the foam mount because I forgot to leave a space for that cord to go through, and it would have been super lumpy. And then I just put it on in a way that made the cord fit through it, and the sentiment was right side up. Look at this page. So I slowed the camera down to real time for you and you can see how reflective it is. I love the gesso because it gives the page the matte sections so it's not all shiny. So I'd love to hear what you think about this page and these color shift paints. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.